Introducing the 1987 TV series 30-something, a show that perfectly captured the challenges of adulthood with its relatable characters and realistic storylines. Set in the late 1980s, it follows a group of friends navigating career, marriage, and parenthood. With its honest portrayal of life's highs and lows, the series struck a chord with viewers, becoming a memorable part of television history. But there's more to the show than meets the eye. Behind the scenes, there are countless interesting, surprising, and emotional facts waiting to be uncovered. Keep watching to learn about the anecdotes and lesser-known details that make this series even more fascinating. Now, let's dive into the world of 30-something. Who was your favorite classic Hollywood actor in the series? Or are there any other facts or stories about it that captivate you? Share your thoughts with us. Stay tuned for more insights and discussions about this beloved series. Your stories and memories enrich the conversation. Join us as we explore the world of 30-something together. Whether one loves or dislikes it, 30-something has left a lasting impression on television enthusiasts. Personally, the show holds a special place in the hearts of many viewers, being a favorite for some and ranking within the top five for others. The mixed reviews are a testament to its polarizing nature. It's not universally appealing. The initial episodes had moments of contrived dialogue, notably in the reassurances given to Michael about Hope losing baby weight even though she was already slim. However, the series quickly found its rhythm and consistently delivered compelling episodes. Some argue that the characters engaged in lengthy discussions, but these conversations reflected intelligent discourse about life. Unlike portrayals of rich yuppies, the main families in the show were depicted striving for a comfortable home and work life, mirroring the aspirations of many during that era. The other characters in the series chose alternative lifestyles, contributing to the show's diversity. 30-something was notable for breaking ground by featuring two gay men in bed, even though their interaction was limited to conversation. This decision sparked controversy and may have contributed to the show's premature end. It's unfortunate, as many viewers would have welcomed further exploration of the characters' journeys. In conclusion, 30-something is a show that sparked strong emotions, whether positive or negative. Its realistic portrayal of the challenges faced by individuals in their 30s resonated with some, while others found it less appealing. The inclusion of diverse characters and groundbreaking moments added to its significance in the television landscape. In one episode titled Strangers, a scene depicted Russell and Peter engaging in a post-coital conversation, marking a significant moment in American network television. This scene, showing two gay male characters in bed together in a sexual context, sparked controversy despite the absence of revealing nudity or physical contact between them. The implication of their encounter led to the loss of approximately one five million in advertising revenue as several advertisers withdrew their commentaries. As a result, ABC pulled the episode from reruns and syndication, only making it available again upon the show's DVD release. Following his role in the show, David Marshall Grant transitioned into a successful career as a writer and producer, contributing to other shows such as Brothers and Sisters and Smash, both of which featured gay couples with little controversy. The main character has four children Robin, Peter, Adam, and Savannah. Adam, his son from his first wife Donna, pursued a career in film filmalandraking, writing, directing, and producing the short film adventures in homeschooling featuring Paul Dooley. Savannah, his daughter from his second wife, Winnie Holzman, wrote episodes for What Goes On. Winnie Holzman herself wrote for the final two seasons of the show and gained acclaim as the creator and writer of the teen drama series My So-Called Life. For viewers in Region 4, Shock Entertainment has released all four seasons of the show on DVD in Australia. The show depicts the lives of a group of friends in their 30s, navigating relationships, careers, and parenthood. In one particular episode titled Strangers, a significant moment in American television occurred as two gay male characters engaged in a post-coital conversation. Despite the absence of revealing nudity or explicit physical contact, the scene sparked controversy, leading to a loss of approximately one five million in advertising revenue. Advertisers withdrew their commentaries, prompting ABC to pull the episode from reruns and syndication. It was only reintroduced upon the show's DVD release. Following the main character's role in the show, David Marshall Grant transitioned into a successful career as a writer and producer, contributing to other shows such as Brothers and Sisters and Smash, both featuring gay couples with little controversy. The main character has four children Robin, Peter, Adam, and Savannah. 
Adam, the main character's son from his first wife Donna, pursued a career in film lantraking, creating the short film Adventures in Homeschooling featuring Paul Dooley. Savannah, the main character's daughter from his second wife Winnie Holzman, wrote episodes for What Goes On. Winnie Holzman herself wrote for the final two seasons of the show and gained acclaim as the creator and writer of the teen drama series My So-Called Life. For viewers in Region 4, Shock Entertainment has released all four seasons of the show on DVD in Australia. Ken Allen holds the distinction of being the sole actor to grace every one of the 85 episodes of the series. His consistent presence contributed to the show's enduring impact. In 2013, Third of Something secured its place in TV history earning the 10th spot on TV Guide's list of the 60 greatest dramas of all time. This recognition speaks volumes about the show's lasting influence and storytelling prowess. A notable behind-the-scenes detail involves Tim, who was urged to grow a beard for his role. Producers believed that this facial hair adjustment would lend authenticity to his character, considering his prior typecasting as younger individuals. 30-something's blend of character depth and relatable narratives resonated strongly, earning it a spot among the top dramas. The series' enduring qualities, coupled with Allen's consistent portrayal, have solidified its position in television history. Tim Busfield, fascinated by standard-bred harness horse racing since the late 1980s, invited his 30-something cast to Los Alamitos Racetrack in 1988. He's been seen at Golden Bear Racetrack in Sacramento, California, watching harness racing with his children. The term third of something entered the Oxford English Dictionary due to the show's popularity, becoming a catchphrase for baby boomers in their 30s. The Oxford English Dictionary officially added it in 1993, defining it as an age between 30 and 40, specifically for the baby boomer generation entering their 30s in the mid-1980s. 30-something, a TV series from 1987, has seen varied releases on DVD. In the UK, Revelation Films brought out the first two seasons on DVD. However, Season 3's release in 2014 was brief, halted due to unspecified contractual issues. Season 4 faced a similar fate. Mill Creek Entertainment later re-released Season 1 on DVD in two parts. Season 1, Volume 1 came out on January 18, 2011, with the initial 10 episodes. Then, on January 10, 2012, Season 1, Volume 2 followed, containing the remaining 11 episodes. The show's producers even contemplated doing a live episode. Third is Something, a television series from the late 1980s, drew inspiration from the film's return of the Sea Caucus 7 and The Big Chill. The show mirrored the concerns of baby boomers and yuppies in the United States during that era, capturing the changing dynamics of masculinity and femininity influenced by the second wave feminism movement. Co-produced by Bedford Falls Productions, the same company linked to the town in It's a Wonderful Life, a classic film produced by Frank Capra, 30-something carried on this association. The show delved into the personal and professional lives of a group of friends navigating the challenges and uncertainties of adulthood. Ken Olin and Patricia Wedig, key actors in the series, are married in real life. This real-life connection added a layer of authenticity to their on-screen chemistry. Allen and Wedig's portrayals of Michael and Nancy Stedman resonated with viewers, providing a glimpse into the complexities of married life and parenthood. In Sumalantrary, Third of Something remains a notable TV series, influenced by significant films and produced by a company with a connection to a cinematic classic. The real-life marriage of two lead actors added a genuine touch to the show's exploration of relationships and adulthood. 